And now, Classic Tracks with Ed Wallace. Edward Joseph Mahoney was born in Brooklyn in 1949. His father, a member of the New York City Police Department, a religious and strict man who was also proud of the fact he had never once given a ticket to an African-American knowing that in the boroughs he worked, all that would have financially devastated their families. His son, Eddie, that was something else completely. Now, Eddie had joined bands in the 60s, mostly to see if that status could get him dates with cheerleaders. But he was thrown out of high school for forging his report card. Least his father tear him up for his lack of grades. In time, Eddie did graduate, and he joined the police force. But he never made it past training because he was told he would have to cut his hair. Even before that, his band had thrown him out for fear their audience would find out he was a cop. Now, once Eddie quit the force, his father took all of his Jimi Hendrix and other rockers' posters off his wall. So at 19, Eddie Money left New York for the Bay Area. He sold bell bottoms to make a living, became friends with some members of Hell's Angels. But there he met famed concert promoter Bill Graham, who became Eddie Money's manager. And nine years after he moved west, out came his first self-titled album. Baby, hold on to me. Whatever will be, will be. The future is ours to see. Now that one record had three hits on it with double platinum including the song, Two Tickets to Paradise. Now, unlike many single vocalist acts, Eddie Money was either writing or co-writing his biggest hit records. But the critics just couldn't stand him. The public, they kind of loved him. But in his young and wilder days, Eddie was known to call music critics while he was hungover and threatened to kill them. By the way, Two Tickets to Paradise was about a girl he knew in college. Her mother wanted her to date someone more substantial than blue-collar Eddie Money. Well, it turns out the girl was also dating the mayor's son. So Eddie scraped together as much money as he could, and he offered her a bus trip to the California Redlands. That did it. She broke up with him. He got a hit record out of it. Still, there was a huge lull in his career because in 1981, someone gave Eddie synthetic fentanyl. And he overdosed on it. He woke up in the operating room, having done serious nerve damage, and as he put it, had blown out his kidneys. It took Eddie Money 11 months just to walk again from that overdose. But that's why you didn't hear anything from Eddie Money from late 1980 until 1982. Eddie came back with I Think I'm in Love and the song Shake It. Now that last song didn't even break the top 50, in spite of the fact most people know it from that era. 
The reason is, Eddie was drunk when he recorded it, and he sang one line as, her tits were shaking. You can't hardly hear it in the record. But once that got out, radio stations immediately dumped it. His manager was furious. Eddie? Eh, he didn't care. However, Eddie's biggest chart hit ever came in 1986. Take Me Home Tonight hit number four on the charts. His next song, number 14. And then, in 1988, Eddie Money scored again with his number nine hit, Walk on Water. Well, if I could walk on water, and if I could find some way to prove, if I could walk on water, would you believe in me? My love is so true. And that was the one song that Eddie hated singing in concert because of this section of that tune. That was supposed to be a horn part. But the player didn't show up, so Eddie had to vamp through it. In 1990 came Eddie's last top 20 hit, Peace in Our Time. Again, in the early years, Eddie wrote or co-wrote his songs. In the later years, not so much. He always complained he never made much money from his success. Even once said, if rock and roll paid so well, why am I living in an apartment and shopping at Walmart. His father never forgave him for not staying with the police force, even long after Eddie's musical success. Now, he always had a great sense of humor, self-deprecating humor, except when being hung over and reading a horrible review. He would marry, had five kids, three of which were in his band as they came of age, He then started complaining in later years about problems with his HOA and when asked when he was going to quit, would say, I'm going to stop when I get rich, and I don't think that's ever going to happen. He then pointed out Sinatra sang until the end, and 91-year-old Tony Bennett still on the road. But Eddie then came down with cancer, and he passed away on September 13th, 2019. Only then did people realize Eddie Money had had hit records for well over a decade. 11 top 40 hits, most of which he wrote or co-wrote. And if you think he didn't have a blue-collar audience, even his 1983 album was released on 8-track tape. And for the record, Eddie Money had an estate of $12 million. He didn't really live in an apartment or shop at Walmart. He was just putting us on. <laughs> 